will be gone. And their proper function at the time of the systole and diastole will be gone. So the disease occurs in the person. These are the heart wells in front of you, the four wells which I have just mentioned. Only remember is this, the metal valve, they are flappy valve, they are flaps. There are two flaps. And in the tricuspid valve well, there are three, three flaps. They are flappy type of valves. But pulmonary valves and aortic valves, they are disc type of valves. There are three discs present in these two valves. They close like a disc if they are approximated together. And the floppy type of valve will definitely close. There is a thala jo hai ke hai, ke do thala lene unko aap khole ya band kare, khole ya band kare. Usko uske andar hawa bane, niche dalen, usko par upar utha de. Is tarah se wo khul jayega ya band ho jayega. This is how the floppy valve will cause their function. There are two types of the disease, it means. If it is a stenosis, it is small or blood pass new pie. It is called stenosis. Valve normally function if it is wide open This is called regurgitation or insufficiency of the valve. So there are two types of the diseases of every valve, whether it is a metal valve or any other valve is concerned. Valvular it is regurgitation or valvular stenosis. Both can cause effect on the heart and from the heart to the whole body. The principal causes of the stenosis is congenital main, mainly main causes. Rheumatic carditis and senile degeneration. As far as valvular regurgitation is concerned, the rheumatic carditis, congenital infective endocarditis, valve ring dilatation because of enlargement of the heart or dilated cardiomyopathy, syphilitic aortitis, traumatic valve rupture, damage to the cord tendinae or papillary muscles, like for example myocardial infarction can cause the uh, infarction of the papillary muscle, senile degeneration. These are the commonest causes of the valve stenosis or valve regurgitation. So they are already, these are the diseases which are in front of you. Mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation is the most commonest diseases asked in the examination. Further followed by the aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. There are four diseases which can be asked many times in your life. Otherwise the tricuspid stenosis or tricuspid regurgitation a permanent stenosis or permanent irritation are rare diseases. They are very not commonly seen in cardiology. So we start with the mitral stenosis. Stenosis. It is the narrowing of the bowel, almost rheumatic in origin in most of the people of the world. Mitral well may be involved alone. It may be involved with the aortic valve in 20% of cases. Three valves can be involved in about 7 to 8% of cases. Four valves are involved in the rheumatic disease in about 1 to 2% of cases. All valves are involved. Tetravalvular disease. 80% of cases, the metal valve is involved in rheumatic disease. Older people can be caused by the heavy calcification of the metal valve. Calcification occur with a degenerative process can cause stenosis, but it is rare. And the congenital again is rare. It is hardly seen in a million of people. The normal valve's uh, diameter is 5 cm. 4 cm, 3 cm, no problem. But if it is less than 1.5 cm, the symptoms will appear. If it is less than 1 cm, the symptom will be definitely higher. And less than 0.5 cm is a severe type of a problem with the patient. 
and the survival is very, very difficult. So pathophysiology in this there is stenosis, the fibrosis, narrowing of the valve. It means the blood which is coming from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium will stay. And the amount of the blood which is coming after the opening of the valve in the left ventricle will be low. Definitely. The end diastolic volume of the left ventricle will become lower and lower. So stroke volume will be lower. And the symptom appears in this case. On this side there is a, because of the stroke volume is slow, the whole body is affected with the slow stroke volume. On the other hand, the back pressure of the left atrium into the left on the pulmonary veins and indirectly into the into the lungs, where the pulmonary pressure increases in the veins and then in the arteries, there will be the secondary pulmonary hypertension which will affect on the pulmonary valve, pulmonary valve will become insu insufficient and pulmonary regurgitation occur. The right ventricle is affected in this way and there is more blood coming into the right ventricle and the higher pressure occurs in the right ventricle which affects on the tricuspid valve and again the tricuspid valve will become insufficient or regal vegetation occurs. In the same fashion, the right atrium will be affected and there is high pressure occurs in the right atrium. This is the pathophysiology and the symptoms occur because of this. So the narrowing of the metal valve will cause the increased left atrial pressure which causes the pulmonary pressure to increase, pulmonary congestion, they will reduce oxygen, oxygenation, higher carbon dioxide exchange, fatigue, dyspnea, orthopnea. It is the right sided failure. On the, other, on the other hand, the blood flow into the left ventricle is reduced, so the cardiac output or stroke volume is reduced, left ventricular atrophy occurs and fatigue occurs. And again, the hypertrophy of the left atrium occurs because of the high pressure in the and high volume in the left atrium. The clinical features are the breathlessness, there will be chest pain. Because of this hemoptysis, fatigue, edema, ascites, palpitation occur because of the enlargement of the left atrium will cause atrial fibrillation and the thromboembolic complications do occur because if there is stasis there will be a mural thrombosis and if it is breaks down it will cause systemic embolism and it can cause the cerebrovascular accident. The clinical features are atrial fibrillation, irregularly irregular pulse and there will be pulses deficit also. Mitral faces, abnormal flushing on the cheeks that occurs from the cutaneous vasodilatation because of the reshifting of the blood. Auscultation you will find there is a loud first heart sound because of the closures you valve to it is fibrous, fibrous valve and afterwards there is the opening snap the opening snap is there which is created by the forceful opening of the metal valve the second phase should be one of that it is followed by a mid diastolic murmur you have blood go up or down to the bottom if the narrow valve will come up, if the blood is broken, then the mid-diastolic valve will produce. What will happen in the first heart sound? It will be loud. It will be possible that you will get the opening snap. And after that, you will get the diastolic valve. The first heart sound will be more than the love. After that, it will get the gap. And there will be a dub, normal. Lub, dub, you tell. Lub, that's how our dub come up. Opening snap, this type of sound. And followed by a mid-diastolic murmur. Diastolic mid me aake, this type of sound. So, this is the work of 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 the work of
ये फर्स्ट थर्ड साउंड की लाउड होने के बाद सेकेंड थर्ड साउंड जो है जो कि नॉर्मल है उसके बाद हो रहा है ये ख्याल कीजिएगा इसका मिड डायस्टॉलिक मर्मर विल बी हर्ड एट द पैक्स इट विल बी एक्सेंचुएटेड विद एक्सरसाइज इट इज रिलेटेड टू द एक्सिला मोस्टली देर विल बी एसोसिएटेड क्रेपिटेशन पलमोनी एडिमा फ्यूजन रेज पलमोनी के ब्लड प्रेशर की वजह से and there is the right ventricular heave i already decided the right ventricle become enlarged and the right the volume is increased and there will be the p2 will be loud because of the pulmonary regurgitation there is secondary pulmonary hypertension investigation we do the ecg chest x ray echo doppler and cardiac catheterization what you see in the x ray is the heart jo hai uska itna size zyada aapko nahi milega we you see on the left border there is a bulging of the left atria this is the first sign you see in the mitral stenosis there are nine other signs which you see in x ray in the mitral stenosis because time ki shortage hai main sare ke sare x ray nahi dikha sakta that iske sath jo hai na wo aur x rays bhi hote hain there is stating of the left border of the heart bhi ho jati hai isme bulging of the uh, right पलमोनी कोनस हो जाती है इसके अंदर डबल राइट हार्ट बॉर्डर भी हो जाता है इसके अंदर इसके अंदर लॉट ऑफ चेंजेस इन लंग्स कार्ली बी साइंस और कर ये आपको सारी चीज़ें मिलती हैं फिर कंजेस्टिव चेंजेस मिलती हैं इसमें आपको और इसके अंदर आपको जो है वो इवन इफ्यूजन मिलता है और फ्रैंक पलमोनी एडिमा मिलता है माइथलिस्टिनोसिस का इसी चीज बड़ा कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स है पी वेव रिप्रेजेंट्स दी एक्टिविटी atrial activity here it is broad and it is splitted ye broad ho jati hai ye three jo hai small square se badi ho jati hai 0.04 second ka ek small square hota hai to teen small square hote hain 0.12 second if the p wave broader broad ho jaye aur 0.12 second se zyada ho this is mean that this is the atrial hypertrophy left atrial hypertrophy This is also known as the P metrally, which is seen in the two, the three, or AVF. Is me, you are looking at the splitting. You are looking at the PVF. Both clear cut. This is management. This is anticoagulation. We can do medically. What can we do? Anticoagulation to reduce the risk of the systemic embolism because of the you have to atrial fibrillation. You have to control it. हार्ट रेट को कंट्रोल करने के लिए डिजॉक्सिन बीचा ब्लॉकर और रेट लिमिटिंग कैल्शियम कैंटागोनिस कैन बी गिवन और डायरोटिक्स देते हैं इसमें टू कंट्रोल द पनमोनिक इंजेक्शन इसके साथ मैं जो देता हूँ हमेशा जो है ना पेंसिलिन जी देते हमेशा पेंसिलिन बेनजीन पेंसिलिन सॉरी मैं देता हूँ इसमें मंथली देता हूँ बिकॉज अदर अदर वेल्स आर इन डेंजर ना वो भी मैं इसमें देता हूँ और मैं इसमें जो है वो आफ्टर लोड एजेंट भी देता हूँ इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेज आई गिव दी स्मॉल डोजेस इन वेरी स्मॉल डोजेस द एस एनिबिटर्स तो पक्का जो ट्रीटमेंट है इसका वो सर्जिकल है या माचिल बैलून बेबी प्लास्टिक कराते हैं आप खासतौर पर प्रेगनेंसी में बड़ी फायदेमंद चीज़ है माचल वेलवेटमी हो सकती है ये आपको विदाउट ओपन हार्ट सर्जरी हो सकती है इंट्रावास्कुलर सर्जरी थ्रू आप कैथेटर बेस सर्जरी कर सकते हैं और ओपन हार्ट सर्जरी में वैल्व रिप्लेसमेंट होगा यंग पीपल में मैकेनिकल वैल्व डाला जाएगा और जो ओल्ड पीपल हैं उनके अंदर टिश्यू वैल्व डाला जाएगा ये चीज़ जो है ना समझ में आनी चाहिए द थिंग इज दिस नाउ बी स्टार्ट विद द मेटरियल रिगिटेशन नाउ वट इज दी मैटल रिगिटेशन वो हमें देखना है सो दू आर डिस्कसिंग दी मैटल रिगिटेशन नाव एंड मैटल रिगिटेशन देर इज इनसिफिशंसी ऑफ द वेल्व basically there is insufficiency of the valve 
the valve become insufficient to hold the blood properly in the left atrium and the, and the blood all blood which is collected in the left atrium will go now into the left ventricle during the diastole diastole all blood even in systole the blood comes into the left ventricle the left ventricle is overloaded this is how the matter regurgitation occurs but the etiology again the same etiology rheumatic heart disease will cause first of fibrosis and there is you know the fibrosis there is relaxation occur and because of this there is a loosening of the space this is called the annulus fibrosis and the valve become insufficient and the mitral valve prolapse is another disease dilatation of the left ventricle which will also stretch the cord tendineae and the commissure of the valve and will cause the regurgitation damage to the valve cusps and the cordy cord tendineae itself can cause for example endocarditis will cause the, uh, the 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 damage to the cusps and, and the cord tendineae it is due to the rheumatic heart disease also the cusps and all the cord tendineae involved the papillary muscles are involved in the ischemia or infarction of the papillary muscle itself it is supplied by the left ascend, uh, uh, descending artery which is the which is the branch of the coronary artery left coronary artery it is rarely seen although but it is one of the cause of the uh, uh, mitral regurgitation to pick how when when we pick this finding in a very severe chest pain in the precordium we diagnose that the infarction of the papillary muscle occur which causes the mitral regurgitation which causes the ascent added sound the the the, the murmur a murmur in a chest wall precordial and a very very you know dramatic appearance is the cause of the acute myocardial infarction and it is the blockage of the left left ascending artery that is ascending artery descending artery of the uh, uh, of the of the of the wall of the anti anterior wall of the heart that is called LDA left descending artery it is the blockage of this the ischemia occur and the papillary muscle is dysfunction the pathophysiology is that the blood stays in the left ventricle more the atria is empty and there is a heavy load on the left ventricle and want to push the blood into the aorta as much as the the power of the heart has but fails so the back pressure occur from the left ventricle and into the left atrium and it mounts again the left atrial pressure will be increased in the same fashion the pulmonary pressure will be increased pulmonary venous pressure then pulmonary arterial pressure secondary pulmonary hypertension occur which will cause effect on the pulmonary valve which will cause pulmonary irritation and it will cause the increase in the volume of the right ventricle also which will affect on the tricuspid valve again and the tricuspid valve become regurgitant again the same type of pathophysiology as in the mitral stenosis the only thing is this the left ventricle has got a plenty of blood the plenty of blood which cannot be emptied properly this is the difference between the two so the pathophysiology is that the incomplete incomplete closure of the matter will cause the back flow of the blood to the left atrium and the volume is reduced or the reduced volume of the blood is ejected by the left ventricle so the stroke volume is reduced cardiac output is reduced on the other hand the left atrial pressure will be increased and left atrial hypertrophy occurs if the left atrial hypertrophy occur it will cause atrial fibrillation the pulmonary pressure will occur secondary pulmonary hypertension will occur the right ventricular pressure will cause higher and higher there will be tachycardia regurgitation as well 
The mortal regurgitation occurred because of the mortal were prolapse in younger people. It is the second commonest cause of the mortal regurgitation caused by the congenital anomalies or the degenerative myxomatous changes or the feature of the connective tissue like for example in case of the Marfan syndrome it may be associated mitral valve prolapse. It is also called flappy valve. It is also known as Barlow's syndrome. The clinical manifestation, the symptoms are concerned with this. there will be fatigue and weakness you know because of the reduced cardiac output. Access the Disney and cough will occur because of the congestion. There will be palpitation because of the atrial fibrillation, irregularly irregular pulse and the pulse, pulse deficit. There will be edema, there will be ascites because of the right side is filled. There will be a, a, a dependent edema. The heart is failing day by day. The signs are the atrial fibrillation, there will be cardiomegaly. If no, the apex will be shifted to the from 7.5 centimeter to 10 centimeter or more than that from the middle sternal line. There will be a pan-systolic murmur you, because the valve will not close properly. It should close properly. If it will not close properly, then there will be a pan-systolic murmur. The murmur occurs from S1. Why S1 occurs? Because of the closure of the metal valve. If the closure of the metal valve and the opening of the pulmonary, the, the aortic valve, the valve is not opened properly. Because it is not opened properly, the, the, the gush of the blood comes into the left ventricle and causes the murmur which is starts from whole of the systole. It is called the pensystolic murmur plus thrill. There will be soft S1. The sound is, or the first heart sound is very soft because the closure sound is gone. And there will be a third sound up here, the apical S3 that is called. There will be signs of the venous congestion. You find the fine capped trumpetation at the basis. There will be signs of the pulmonary hypertension and right failure also. Jiggler venous pressure will be increased. Investigation will be done the ECG, the chest X ray, the ACU, and the Doppler and the cardiac catheterization. The ECG, the same finding you will find. There will be P materially, which I have previously described. On the X ray chest, you find the heart is enlarged and there are congestive changes are seen in the lungs. In the echo, you will find. The how much dilatation of the valve occurs, Doppler will show how much regurgitation has occurred. Cardiac catheterization will confirm the dilated left atrium or left ventricular etc. and pulmonary mitral regurgitation and pulmonary hypertension and other coexisting uh, artery disease, cardiac catheterization. The management medically will be the same. Reduce the uh, preload by giving the dilatics reduce the afterloads by giving the vasodilators like ACE inhibitors. If the patient in the atrial fibrillation, you, you give the anticoagulant and digoxin. But the main treatment is to replace the valve. In the young people, it is the mechanical valve. In the old people, it will be tissue valve. Coming to the aortic stenosis, the aortic valve is very important valve. The all of the blood of the left ventricle is now going into the aorta through the aortic valve. And then it is distributed to the whole body. It got three cusps. It is tricuspid valve. It is not bicuspid valve, it is tricuspid valve. And it is a sliding type of a valve. Discs, there are three discs. Now, Narrowing will cause the problems. The geology in infant and children and adults and other congenital aortic stenosis may be there, or there may be congenital subvalvular aortic stenosis, or there will be a congenital subvalvular aortic stenosis. Supravalvular, it may be, it may be subvalvular, 
Young adults to the middle age, it may be calcification and fibrosis of the congenitally bicuspid aortic valve or the rheumatic aortic stenosis. This is the cause which I have seen much. In the middle age to elderly, the senile degeneration aortic stenosis occurs. We see cases after the age of 80 years. The calcification of the bicuspid valve and the rheum rheumatic aortic stenosis. This is the cause which you usually see at the age of 50 to 60 years of the age. You, you usually see aortic stenosis. Now the pathophysiology is this, the, the, the blood is present in the left ventricle but it is not emptied in, into the aorta. So there is a pressure gradient occurs between the aorta and the left ventricle. So the end diastolic volume of the left ventricle is much higher and the blood is not properly pro pro propelled into the aorta. But the result is this, the body, the whole body is affected. In the heart is concerned, the back pressure again is will affect on the, uh, on the wall of the left ventricle, it become, become dilated and dilatation can cause the uh, uh, mitral valve to become regurgitant. Again the vicious cycle occurs on that side also. Pathophysiology is described like stiffening, narrowing of the aortic will cause the left ventricular hypertrophy and it will cause the compression of the coronary arteries and the oxygen supply will be reduced and there will be myocardial ischemia because of the low cardiac output and uh, stroke volume. On the other hand, the incomplete emptying of the left atrium will cause the pulmonary congestion and the right sided heart failure, which is circular. Clinical feature is triad, very very common one, number one is the angina pectoralis, triad number one, triad number two in this case is syncope and third one is the exertion dyspnea. There are three things for cardinal symptoms or triad. This is, should be remembered by the student, the patient can die at any time because of the dysarrhythmias, many dysarrhythmias including the atrial fibrillation. The signs you find because of the stenotic valve, the valve will not open properly, there, the, there will be the sound, ejection, systolic murmur, this murmur occur after the first heart sound and it is a murmur like shh, shh, this type of a sound. Eject the type of a murmur. It can be transmitted into the carotid arteries. The slow rising carotid pulse or a slow rising uh, radial pulse can occur in this. Thirsting apex beat can occur because of the pressure overload. Heaving of the heaving type of apex beat and there will be narrow pulse pressure because of the low blood coming in the aorta. Signs of the pulmonary venous congestion is there, like crepitations. Investigation of electrocardiography, the left ventricular hypertrophy is visible and left ventricular band block. Chest X-ray will be normal in most of the cases, but in large left ventricle and dilated ascending aorta is seen if the condition is severe. An echo, the calcified valve and restricted opening is uh, can be demonstrated and the Doppler again the same thing will say that the most of the blood is rem remaining in the left ventricle it is not going in the aorta there is a pressure gradient higher pressure gradient the cardiac catheterization will definitely identify the coronary artery disease uh, to see that it is uh, normal or not because of the management purposes Management is that, that the asymptomatic aortic stenosis, we keep the drugs, the same drug which I have used previously in the mitral regurgitation of mitral stenosis, along with the, but remember, the drugs should be given in a very low dosage, 
or those drugs are used where there is no hypertension. If there is hypertension, the coronary ischemia will worsen. So we do not give the high intensity drugs. This is the message. In moderate to severe stenosis, Doppler echocardiography or in a symptomatic patient is very symptomatic. The valve replacement will will be the choice. In the young people, the mechanical valve Edwards or Star Edwards valve which should be replaced, and in the uh, in the old people, tissue valves will be used. In congenital aortic stenosis, the aortic balloon valvuloplasty, or any pregnancy aortic balloon balloon valvuloplasty is the good choice. Atrial fibrillation will be controlled by giving the intercoagulation with low dose of the uh, calcium channel blockers. Now, aortic regurgitation is another condition which should be discussed. The valve is insufficient. to hold the blood properly from the aorta so the blood from the aorta now it it is not properly go to the peripheral uh, vessels rather than it will come back again into the left ventricle to the causes of congenital the bicuspid valve or the disproportionate cusp acquired again the rheumatic disease which is the commonest cause which i have seen infective endocarditis is yes another important cause trauma to the chest wall is another cause aortic dilatation marfan syndrome aneurysm syphilis dissection of the aorta is another cause of the aortic regurgitation acute aortic uh, regurgitation now pathophysiology i already said that in the bowl you are holding the blood into the left ventricle and you are not giving the blood to the aorta so the ischemia occurs to the different part of the body and also to the coronary ischemia occurs most of, mostly these people come with the severe type of the angina uh, pectoralis in complete closure of the aortic valve will cause the black back flow of the blood to the left ventricle it will cause the left ventricle hypertrophy and dilatation left sided heart failure and reduced cardiac output on the one hand on the other hand the increased left atrial pressure because of the back pressure is increased the left atrial hypertrophy it will cause the atrial fibrillation and it will cause the pulmonary pressure to increase it will affect on the the right ventricular press, uh, uh, pressure which is increased and in the case the right sided heart failure also occurs so this is the pathophysiology of the same same type of the pathophysiology as the other The clinical features is that the mild to moderate car in aortic regurgitation, usually asymptomatic. These people, but in awareness of the heartbeat palpitations are the problem in these cases. The result from the increased stroke volume. Severe aortic regurgitation will cause the angina. It will cause breathlessness. And signs: the pulse are the collapsing pulse. or water hammer pulse low diastolic and increased pulse pressure high pulse pr- pressure in this case bounding peripheral pulse there are lot of signs capillary pulsation in nail beds quinky sign there is a fumular blue pistol shot murmur which is called rosier sign and head nodding with the pulse which is called demus sign which is a very common sign which we elaborated in the severe type of the aortic regurgitation other signs are there fourth heart sound can be present displays have being a pathology etc but they are not important the mama here is the diastolic mama second heart it is associated with the second heart sound systolic mama can be occur because of the increased stroke volume it can be associated but the diastolic mama is the mama which you can uh, demonstrate it in by putting the stethoscope on the aortic area and ask the patient to bend forward and he should inspire and then expire and hold the breath properly then you you can uh, appreciate this murmur very well there is ostensible murmur also there in the mitral area because of the stretching of the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve 
In the session, ECG initially normal, but the left, left ventricular hypertrophy occurred, ultimately in T wave neurogen occurred. Chest X ray will show the heart is much enlarged. This is one condition that we call bovine heart. Heart is a very, very big heart. Now, echo and echo dilated left ventricle and the hyperdynamic left ventricle and floating anterior metal lip that you see. And the Doppler detects the reflex and the cardiac catheterization, the dilated left ventricle and the aortic equitation and the dilated aortic uh, uh, root you will find. Management and treatment, you will uh, see the treatment of the initial uh, condition like endocarditis or the syphilis should be treated or you should reduce the preload, you should reduce the afterload. The same uh, medical management, you will give the uh, penicillins, long-acting penicillin for whole life because other walls, valves can be involved. The ultimate treatment is the uh, replacement of the valve. You have to replace the valve in the young people, the mechanical valve and in the old people, the tissue valve. Now tricuspid valve will be involved as stenosis which is very rare condition. It is usually congenital stenosis and in some cases it is the, due to the uh, rheumatic heart disease. In very rare condition it may be associated with autoimmune disease. The tricuspid stenosis, the same features occur as mitral stenosis on that side. That is, there will be S1 is loud in, on that side and there will be the diastolic murmur occur on that side, on the right side. Same, th same, same, same feature on the right side. And the treatment is one. The medical treatment you go the same. But the, the, the thing is this, you have to replace the valve. This is the treatment of choice. Tricuspid regurgitation is always secondary. This is not primary. It is due to the high pulmonary pressure. Secondary or primary pulmonary hypertension will cause the increased right ventricular pressure and it will cause the tricuspid regurgitation. Tricuspid regurgitation, there will be pansystolic murmur in the right parasternal border. This is the classical finding. The treatment is that you have to manage the primary condition. And if it is not possible, then you have to replace the valve. The pulmonary valve disease are again rare, pulmonary stenosis are a part of the congenital heart diseases. There are many congenital heart diseases which are associated with the pulmonary stenosis. In rare cases it may be associated with the uh, rheumatic heart or in very very rare cases it may be associated with autoimmune disease. Again in the same way, the same features we, we find as aortic stenosis. That is, there is, will be the uh, a, a murmur of the systolic region, systolic murmur in the pulmonary area, which is radiated on the other side on, of the neck. And the thing is that the pulmonary stenosis means that the blood is not going into the, into the lungs properly. So there will be definitely hypoxia will cause problems in these patients. The pulmonary stenosis will be managed on the same as the mitral stenosis, the medical management will be the same and the surgical management should be done, it should be replaced, the valve should be replaced. If young people, the mechanical valve, the old people, the tissue valve. The pulmonary recuperation is always secondary, remember. It is a secondary phenomenon because of the pulmonary pressure, high pressure, secondary pulmonary hypertension. 